Have you made up your mind about Jordan Peterson? It's stressful because he's a complex figure that's both profoundly right about some things and strangely off about others. Yet either way, we face an enormous cultural pressure to either endorse him or reject him, to love him or to hate him. And this speaks to the biggest problem in politics right now, which is that all of us are stuck in an either or mindset. It's become more important to display loyalty to our political tribe than it is to understand a person or an issue in all of its complexity. I'm Ronan Harrington and I'm exploring the new politics that's on the other side of this culture war. And I see Jordan Peterson as a test case for getting there. It becomes more apparent what to make of Jordan Peterson, his strengths and his weaknesses when he appears alongside a more left-leaning figure who is open and willing to engage him in dialogue. Luckily, we've had that opportunity through a series of conversations he's had with Russell Brand. In this video, I'm going to compare and contrast Brand and Peterson on the issue of power and how we change society. And to do this, I'll be drawing on metamodernism, a stage of political thinking that comes after modernism and postmodernism, integrating and transcending them. So let's start with lobsters, and by that I mean hierarchies. Peterson talks a lot about dominance hierarchies, and he generally sees them as natural, productive, and meritocratic. But if you play out the value in a social landscape, you're going to produce a hierarchy. And the problem with producing a hierarchy is that a small number of people are going to be more successful than the majority, and a very large number of people aren't going to be successful at all at, at that particular thing. It's inevitable. Brand, on the other hand, tends to look at elite power structures and their pathological tendencies, seeing them as more threatening than the college campus culture that Peterson detests. But I feel that we're already being subject to a kind of invisible tyranny, that it's already happening. And I don't think it's happening as a result of like some critical theory, post-Marxist... Like, I feel that, that that's not where power is. That feels like it's sort of well, bullshit, we could, we could but it doesn't feel like it's as fucking powerful as Glaxo Klein or like, you know, it's not as powerful as uh, Halliburton. Peterson has some sympathy for this leftist position. And so I've been concerned about what's happening in the university on the radical left. Mm. And your concern, the concern that you just brought up, is something like um, overwhelming large-scale corporate dominance. And I think that's also a reasonable set of concerns. But he doesn't think there's much we can do about large-scale systemic change and fears attempts at doing so, associating them with failed communist projects. You better bloody well wa watch out, because when you radically make things egalitarian, you're going to wipe out all your productive people and then you're going to starve. Instead of focusing on structural solutions, Peterson has a deep conception of what a moral code looks like for society and believes in individuals who have purpose and are aiming in something higher. He simply believes that we need more competent and trustworthy people in positions of power. See, I think, I think the most effective solution to that problem is to have the economic system run, let's say, by distributed individuals who are themselves aiming at a higher good. So I think the way that you, the most effective way of regulating the market, so to speak, is to improve the moral character of the people who make up the market rather than directly regulating the market. And I'll, I'll tell, I'll, not that the market doesn't necessarily need some regulation because you might say well, but this is already the system that we have meritocracy has become corrupted and is rewarding bad actors think about the technocrats and the elites who vie for positions of power over society they have lost touch with moral systems of self-regulation because of our wider culture and our structures and brand points this out but I also believe that if you have a society that's predicated on the, some of the worst aspects of human behaviour, lust, desire, fear, if lust, fear and desire are so high in the mix, if you're continually being prompted towards onanism and consuming, I think it's that individual improvement will be insufficient. In these conversations we see Brand again and again emphasising the realities of market failure, crony capitalism, rent seeking and the extreme inequality that leads to troubling imbalances of power and perverse incentives. We therefore cannot rely on individual improvements alone, as Peterson suggests, because the problem is structural. We all know what happens to good apples in rotten barrels. And this speaks to the nagging doubts that progressives have about Peterson. He seems to underestimate systemic forces and exaggerate fears about any collective attempt at correcting them. Most of the major global problems that we face are the result of collective processes that require intervention at a systems level. Imagine trying to solve climate change, mass migration and income inequality at the level of individual virtue and good behaviour alone. 
Yes. If more people took individual responsibility, the world would be a better place. And Jordan Peterson has made a profound contribution in this area, but that's hardly enough. There are many powerful systems in place that are self-protective. They actively defend themselves against change and reform. And to upend these unjust power structures requires more than just wise individuals. It takes the wisdom and the force of enormous groups of people working together. And Peterson is right that there is a shadow of authoritarianism in social justice movements and that activists need to do inner work to recognize the victimhood and the moral superiority that lurks behind their virtue. But it is farcical to think that any attempt at collective action is going to result in Stalinism or the Gulag. How could you miss? And Peter's paranoia of what he calls postmodernism simply leaves us with a vision of progress that's about individuals bettering themselves. There's no shared vision or shared goals. There's no sense of the meaning that is to be found in making the world a more just place. So ultimately, it's an impoverished vision of what it means to be a developed person. And it's a vision of politics and of human life that we simply can't afford right now. We've done a lot of homework to make these videos, but the best thing we have read is 12 Perspectives on Jordan Peterson by Jonathan Rousen. And if you want to learn more about metamodernism, read The Listening Society by Hansi Freinacht. If you want to see more of these videos, support us on Patreon. Thank you.